What's up guys, how you're doing? Welcome to another video. So, camera settings for sports photography part two. And I know loads of you guys are saying, Rob, part two, like where's part one? We've looked on your channel and I can't see it. Probably because you didn't look far enough back. We made part one a long time ago. If you look back on my channel, you can go find the video. Even more simple for you, if you haven't already seen part one, it will be valuable to watch that before you watch this video. So what you can do is click on this link right here, that will take you to part one and then you come straight back here and I mean straight back here and you can watch part two. It's going to be a great video, let's go. So, camera settings for sports photography. I think it's going to be a useful topic for you guys. I've got loads of positive reaction off the back of part one. Just because we've had lots of other videos and bits going on, we just never really got to part two. So if you are glad to see part two here, take a second, go hit that like button. It helps me out loads on my channel and I really, really appreciate it because it helps my video to be more successful. So thank you for everybody who has taken a second to do that right now. I'm sure you all have. You'd be crazy not to. Hit the like button because liking his goodness. So in part one, lots of you guys who've seen that will already know, we talked a bit more about the basics of exposure. We talked about shutter speed, we talked about aperture, we talked about ISO levels. So I'm assuming at this stage, you kind of already understand that. And just a very brief recap, we are now assuming that we're using a fast shutter speed because we know we need to. So let's pretend for this, we're using a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. We've got our aperture wide open. So for this, we're gonna be saying we're shooting at f2.5 date and we also know that we need to then set our ISO level as low as we can but however high it needs to be in order for us to get the exposure correct whilst using those other two settings. So right now we're assuming we already understand that that's what we've done and now we're looking at some different settings. So I'm going to talk about a couple of bits today. I'm going to talk about my file type so why I choose a certain file type. We're going to be talking about a couple of bits around how I set up the camera so some buttons that I use to set up the camera and we're also going to be talking a little bit about autofocus and some of the choices I use for autofocus. We're going to talk about one bonus fourth setting that you probably wouldn't think of or associate with sports photography. I certainly didn't when I started out but now I've come to learn how important it is. Now it's important to say everything that I'm talking about is in relation to Canon mainly because I shoot Canon. Specifically for this we're talking about the Canon 1DX so all the settings that we reference are to do with the Canon 1DX. Don't worry though, if you don't use Canon or you don't use a 1DX, it doesn't matter because 95% of what we're talking about will apply to any camera, whether you're using Nikon, Sony, whatever else it might be. 95% of this is still going to apply exactly the same. It just might be called some slightly different things. So the first thing we're going to touch on is file type. Now I've talked before, when I shoot sports, I tend to shoot in JPEG. Now, why do I do that? Because loads of people will be thinking, but surely you get a better quality file if you shoot in RAW. And the answer is yes, yes you do. But when I'm shooting sports, quite often I'm in a situation where I need to be sending those images off straight away. So I need to work with them very, very quickly. I need to be able to take a photo, bring them into my laptop, caption them, crop them, edit them, export them and send them. And I need to do that as quick as I can. And in very simple terms, a JPEG file gives me the ability to do that much much quicker than a raw file. If you wanted the best possible file, yes, raw would be the way to go. And quite often I will shoot raw if I'm in a situation where I'm not having to send those images off. But if I am and I'm under a time pressure, then I shoot JPEG pretty much all the time because those files process quicker and they are easier and faster to work with. Now with most cameras you can still get a great quality file. In the menu you'll normally have a choice of what kind of size or what quality of JPEG you want to shoot and I will always shoot with the largest JPEG possible in my camera. There's lots of different ones, the smaller ones, medium ones, and I always choose the larger one. That's the one that I shoot with when I'm shooting in JPEG. It does mean there's a bit more pressure to get your exposure and other things right in camera because you do have a little bit more uh, limitation on what you can do to edit that photo afterwards. You can't play with the white balance in quite the same way. Uh, you can't recover some of the highlights and things like that in quite the same way. So it's important to try to get the exposure right. But you can do that if you follow all those bits that we talked about in part one. So the next thing to talk about is some of the autofocus settings that I use. Now I've done a whole video on autofocus which I'm going to link at the end of this video so don't worry carry on watching this one and at the end of this video 
you can always go check that one out if you want to understand a bit more of the specifics around the autofocus bits that I use. The main thing that I'm going to be doing is shooting in continuous focus mode. So on the Canon, that's called AI Servo. I have been known to call that Al Servo before. AI Servo, that is the continuous focus mode. I believe it's called something different on Nikon and the other cameras, but that's the mode you want to use, continuous focus. The reason you want to do that is because you will often in sports be photographing something that is constantly moving. And you don't want to be having to constantly refocus, refocus, refocus. So if you have the continuous focus set up and you track your subject, it will automatically focus for you again and again and again as that subject moves. The other thing that I will be doing is using the single point focus. Now, most cameras have the ability to set up like zone focus areas or little crosses in the middle or various different bits. I tend to use the single point focus and most of the time I've got that set to the center point on my camera. The reason I do that is because I want to be able to focus as specifically and precisely as I can on exactly the thing that I'm trying to focus focus on. So I find single point focus works better when you're trying to achieve that, especially when you're shooting something that's moving all over the place. You can focus on the player's chest or their face if they're close enough and you can get that focus to be continuous combined with the AI servo mode. Now with autofocus, lots of people always ask me about the different case modes. Now if you're using a 1DX or a 7D2 or a couple of other Canon cameras, you have the different case modes set up in the menu on autofocus. 90% of the time, I tend to to shoot in case one. I know a lot of people tend to use case four. Personally, I use case one. Case one is described as the versatile multi-purpose setting. Case four is described as for subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly, which of course applies to sports. But if you read the descriptions of a lot of the other cases, they pretty much all could apply one way or another. I find case one to be fairly versatile and it works for me. So the majority of the time I am using case one. I I don't claim to be an expert with those cases, probably need to play around with them a little bit more in all honesty, but that's the one that I use at the moment. Another important point with sports is to make sure that you're using the mode on your camera where you take multiple pictures with one press of the shutter button. Now, on my Canon, I've got the option to go into the menu and I can move it from single shooting, high speed, continuous shooting. That's the one that I use because that enables you to take a load of pictures, with one press of the button. And I do that because when I'm shooting sports, chances are it's moving all over the place and I want to take several frames so I can look back afterwards and then make sure I pick out the frame where the ball's just right and it's not blocking their face or if they're striking a football, the moment they've just kicked it. And by using multiple frames, you can do that really, really well. Now, of course, the 1DX, as you just heard, fires off more than 10 frames a second, but loads of other cameras have all different frame rates, but they're still perfectly fine. I've shot sports with cameras that shoot five frames per second, and I've got on absolutely fine with it. I haven't struggled with that at all. So don't worry too much. If your camera doesn't shoot 10 frames per second, it doesn't matter. Just set it to whatever ability your camera has. So I talked earlier on when I talked about file types, I touched on white balance. Now with white balance, there's some different ways you can do it. A lot of people will manually set their white balance at all different venues. And sometimes when I'm shooting at indoor venues where I know the lighting and the white balance is gonna be consistent, I will do that. But even in those situations, you tend to have advertising boards or, or lighting or big screens that change all the time. They cast funny lights across courts and fields and everything everything else and it means the white balance is always changing. So what I tend to do for most of the time is I do use auto white balance. Now yes with the JPEG file you don't have the same ability to go and change it afterwards that you would do with a raw file but you can still tweak it. You can warm an image up, you can cool it down slightly if you've got a slight bit of yellow or a slight bit too much blue and that's something which you can still affect. So for 90% of my sports work I do shoot with auto white balance especially in situations where maybe I'm outside and the light's changing all the time with sunlight, advertising hoarding, shadows, whatever else, I do tend to use auto white balance because especially with my 1DX, it tends to get me 99% of the way there. And if I need to tweak it slightly with the JPEG file, slightly warm it, slightly cool it, I still have the ability to do that afterwards in Lightroom if I need to. Now I talked about another random setting that a lot of people wouldn't think of when it comes to sports photography. And that is the date and time. It's really important to make sure 
sure that your date and time is exactly accurate in your camera. Now I do that in two different ways. The first way is of course that I make sure it's actually correct. So I go to one of my cameras, I make sure the date and time is correct. The other thing I do is I will sync it up with my other camera. So I will look in one, I'll make sure it's correct. I then go to my other camera and I make sure I sync them to the second so they are exactly the same. Why is that an important setting for sports photography? Well, I'll be the first to admit, I didn't realize how important it was when I started out, but something which um, somebody else taught me is that quite often, news outlets or media outlets might search for images based on a time of an event. So for example, if you're shooting a football game and there's a big event like a red card or a, a nasty challenge where someone gets injured or, or a goal or, or maybe a fight or something like that and people want to find that image, quite often they will search for images based on the time that image was taken. And if your camera is incorrect, like before now my camera has been an hour out because I forgot to change it when the clocks change, that could put you in a situation where your image won't get found off the basis of the fact the time is wrong. And that's why it's such an important thing to do. The other big benefit, especially when you're shooting across multiple cameras, is that when you bring those images in later on to Photomechanical Lightroom and you've got them set up in a time sequence, you know they're gonna be in the right order. If you've shot images with one camera, then another camera, then back to the other camera, they're still gonna be in order that those images were taken if you organize them all by the right time sequence. Now that pretty much rounds us off guys. There probably is a lot more we could talk about so I think there's a good chance there will be a part three of this series but that's probably it for part two. Loads of other settings there that I used for sports photography. I hope you guys found that useful. If you did please do take a second to go hit that like button. It helps me out loads on my channel and if you haven't already please do think about subscribing. There's going to be a part three and there's going to be loads of other videos that you should check out on my channel. We're knocking out two or three videos a week right now so well worth you subscribing if you haven't already if you want to see some of my pictures make sure you go check me out on instagram my main account over there for sports is at rob sambles sport you can find me right here you can also find me on twitter as well that's at rob sambles photo go check those out comment on something tell me you came from youtube because it's always cool to see who's come there from my channel right here in the meantime guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys i will see you on the next video